most of my cousins were all females. So I grew up in a, <laughs> I call it a Jewish neurotic household. If you all know anything about the Jewish heritage is we like talking smack about each other behind everyone's back. That's just what we do. But I, w- I was raised with an overbearing, loving, caring mom because my dad wasn't around and I leaned on my mom for everything. And I started to uncover who I was through my mom and I'm a highly emotional guy. I don't mind crying and I don't mind speaking my mind and I wear my emotions on my sleeves, but that's what makes me, me. But that's also what made me stand out in sales. And I'll I'll share this with you and then I'll open it up, you know, to, to kick off this whole relationship thing. But it was what really fueled me was the relationship I had with my mom and the dysfunctional relationship I had with my dad that fueled me out into the sales world. And I knew that I was connecting mm-hmm. really well with my mom. And I know I wasn't connecting very well with my dad because we we're complete polar opposites still to this day. And he lives eight miles from me. And I love him to death, though, where it's highly dysfunctional because I never really had that relationship. But I had a really great relationship with my mom and I saw how it was developing. And as I got older and I got into sales, my dad didn't want me to get into sales. Obviously, when you grow up with a dad who's a rocket scientist and you go into sales, it's like, come on, right? And I hated school. I hated everything about school. He's a brainiac and I got 2.1 in high school. And to be quite honest, I smoked pot my whole entire high school career. Oh. And, but that's just, that's it. I don't mind, I don't mind sharing it, but it's, it's the past, right? I'll talk about it. But, and, and it really wore on my dad. I went to college just to appease my dad. I think I got a 2.2 in college. I got like three incompletes my last semester in college, but I got my degree just so I can say I got my degree. And then I went into sales and I share this, the little backstory behind this, because what fueled me in sales were relationships. And I knew the way that I was building relationships with my mom was the way I wanted to build relationships with my clients. And I was willing to, I use the terminology cross the line, but cross the line in a positive way. I was willing to remove that barrier and get vulnerable enough and share some of my secrets, right? Some of the things that fueled me and how I connected and related to my customers. And it took me a long time to figure it out. And and truth be told right now, I found myself as I wrote Selling from the Heart, Jackie might know some of this story just because I know Jackie the longest on this call, is I really came to grips with who I was in writing Selling from the Heart, in bringing this to the forefront. And why I wrote the book the way I do, and I'll kick it off this way, is I wrote the first three chapters of the book based on 28 years in sales and being on dysfunctional sales teams and not having one manager ask me how they can help me become better. It's, you know, they were always worried about how can I help you become better so you can sell more. There, I don't, I don't remember one at an, in 28 years, one course, one workshop, anything I went through where they had me work on me, as opposed to go to, right, we've all been to workshops in our careers in the past where it's been career focused based on, you know, more product knowledge, more training around what you do and so forth. And that's when the light went off as I was just so, you know, I was fired from my job at 50 years old. So I'll be 56 next week. And at 50, I was fired from a high paying corporate job. And it, it, it took a lot out of me and it took me a while to pick myself back up off the ground. And then after speaking with my wife and Daryl, Amy, who Jennifer and Jackie know, who's now my podcast partner, they both said, why don't you take what made you, you, and take that out of the sales world. And so I share a little bit of this backstory because I was vulnerable enough with myself that I say, hey, you know what? I'm going to push the message out there because I knew how I connected and related to my mom. I knew how I connected and related to my customers and how I built relationships. What would it be like if I took this to the sales world and I really put, I say push the envelope or if I push, push the message on, you know what? Relationships matter. But if relationships matter, then what are you doing with it? And it took me a while to uncover that 
in order for me to build really strong relationships with my customers, the first relationship I had to build was with me. And I really had to get to know me and what, way, what made me tick and why me. You get what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And it's, it's really interesting that I'm even saying this because this is the latest book I'm reading. It's, it's called Deliberate Discomfort. It's, um, it's by a guy named Jason Van Camp. I'm in a mastermind and I heard him speak about three months ago. He's a, uh, he's a retired, retired US Special Operations Forces. He was in the Green Berets, Army Ranger highly decorated. And he wrote a book about deliberate discomfort. And in the first chapter of the book, he's talking about the first like big time person he met in the army, asked him, who are you? Right. Wow. He asked him a simple question. Who are you? What are you all about? And Jason said in the book, right. And this is in chapter one, he goes on for, he said a good 30 to 45 minutes. And he described himself based on all the accomplishments that he did. Right. And so this guy goes, Jason, I didn't ask you your accomplishments. I asked, who are you? Right. What are you all about? And that's how it relates because when we ask people, right. If somebody said, right. Hey, Amy, you know, what are you all about? Who are you? What's your makeup? It's our default. We go right to our accomplishments. And that took me a while. And I said, you know what? I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to really push the button. And I had to rediscover who I, who I was and build a relationship with who I am and come to grips with, you know, all the things. I, I'm a big believer. We all have baggage in the closet. I use that terminology. We all have baggage in the closet. We all have something that we're running from. Well, the thing that I was running from that fueled me, by the way, this is a hint because I'm starting my second book in a couple of weeks, is it's still selling from the heart, but it's going to be relationship based. But the relationship that I was really running from was the rocky relationship I had with my dad. And until I came to grips with it, it was preventing me from becoming the best version of me. Now, I didn't come to grips with it until September of 2018, the day this book came out. So it's only been a couple years. But ever since then, and why I wrote the book the way I do is chapter one is all about finding the real me. Is I found the real me writing my book. And so that's why I'm harder on myself than anybody else. So, you know, the, the things that I'd like for us to think about and I want to open this up for conversation and we'll keep this thing rolling is I would ask you what defines you? What's the relationship that you have with yourself? How would you describe that? And how many of you even work on it? Hmm. I know Jack. So Jack, you want to start this off? <laughs> sure. Um, I've actually been working on myself for years. When, when I first read Larry's book, and that's how I reached out to him on LinkedIn because I swear to God, he wrote that book for me. I thought I'd be, I was the only salesperson in the world because when you hear about someone in sales, you already have that, um, you know, that notion of they're going to be pushy. They're going to be hard. They're going to be, you know, and I'm like so complete opposite of that. So that to me was just very eye-opening that there's more people out there. And not that I was naive to think that that was the case, but you don't run into them as often as you run into the other type of salesperson. So um, I, I actually have two passions in life and one self-help and one sales. So I am always reading books that relate to those two factors. So, and um, Larry was kind enough to introduce us to Tasia Valen Valencia. Is that how you pronounce Valenza. your last name? Valenza. And we're doing a 90, uh, 30 day challenge on Give Great Voice, which is really how you talk to yourself and how you talk to others. So it is, it's actually very fascinating because I don't know about you, Larry, but I am now catching myself when I start to just automatic react as opposed to let's play that character better. So those are some of the things that, you know, I've been working on, like, 
you know, something that happened with one of my agents, he was working with another leader who might I add, doesn't always do things the proper way. Well, she put one of my agents in the crossfires and my mother bear automatically kicked in. And then it's like, I had to take a step back and really, how do I want to come across, you know, even though I'm sure they're appreciating the, you know, the mother bear type and I'm going to protect you. I also needed him to understand why. So it is, it's a work in progress all the time. We are, a, 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 we're an art form, each and every one of us. And it's like, how do you want to be portrayed? And so I actually now have more conscious thought of that than I ever had before. And a lot of, I've learned so much just by connecting with Larry and Jennifer. I have met now people in all different facets to help me grow. So, and th thanks for sharing. Here's what, here's what I want us to think about. Nice cat, by the way, Jan. Thanks. <laughs> is, uh, are, you, are you a big believer in perception as reality? I know I am. I, I, I mean, I operate- You are what you think you are. Perception, right? I, I, and the reason why I say this is, what words would you use to describe yourself, right? If you think perception's reality, let's just take a deep, hard look inside of ourselves right now and how do we perceive ourselves? Because I know this changes over time. And it was interesting. I was talking with a buddy of mine over the weekend and we were talking about, you know, the one person on your shoulder who gives you all these positive thoughts and the other person on the other shoulder that tells you you're full of shit, right? And you stink and all that stuff. We're no good and all that part. Sorry, I dropped the S word. <laughs> Right. I'm sure they've I, heard it before. I promise it won't get any worse <laughs> than times. that. But, but he said, you know what? We got to learn how to atrophy, which I thought was a really cool way of explaining it. He goes, we got to learn how to atrophy all the negative talk on this other shoulder that we're no good and all that. Because all that negative self-talk beats on the relationship we have with ourself. So then that being said is, I would ask you is what words, right? If you're just jotting down words right now, maybe go ahead and do it, is what words would you use to describe yourself? Mm. You know, just take a sheet of paper out and then just say, and don't overthink it, right? But just real quick, just start writing down words that you would use to describe yourself. Got one. <laughs> Happy. <laughs> okay. That's a good one. Why do you think this is so important? Because we believe we our um, subconscious tells us otherwise, you know, like our past, um, especially if we have a lot of pain in the past and it keeps coming up. But um, like if we tell ourselves we're happy and, and like the I am statements are so powerful, it, it just helps you start believing it. You're kind of like reprogramming. So because you I'll are ask, what you think you are. Yes. What's that? I said, you are what you think you are. Yes. Exactly. So, so, you know, not necessarily we're going to go around the room and, and share your words, but here's what I'd like for us to think about those words that you write down on how you would describe yourself. Then I would ask you to do a couple things go to a spouse or a significant other, um, somebody close to you, your friends and so forth, and then ask them, what words would you use to describe me? You know, Larry, we've kind of done that in a couple of our groups um, that's kind of come up. <laughs> I gotta be honest, the words that some of the people they came up with for me, I kind of was afraid to hear them, but I was happy to hear them too, because they weren't bad. <laughs> but the first thought when you said that is, oh, I don't know if I want to know that. <laughs> yeah. I'm not sure I'm up to that, you know, but, but it was good to hear it. And, 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 I, and I would, and you know what, I'd offer this, and, and Jackie's heard me say this before, Jennifer, you've heard me say it, is the way you capture the morning and work on yourself and the relationship that you have with yourself first thing in the morning plays off in how it kicks your day off. It, it, it really does. 
And that's why I'll, I'm going to encourage you guys really uncover who you are. I wrote an article. I'd be more than happy to share it with Jennifer. If, if you want it, you can pass it out to the group is I love RE words. Art, anything that starts with RE, like re-engage, re-equate, re-educate, and so forth. And I would urge you to get reacquainted with who you are, right? And maybe define yourself, right? Who are you? Who am I? What am I all about? What's my why? What makes me come alive? What makes me tick? Mm -hmm. And don't be afraid just to say what's ever on your heart. And then share it out. I find all too often people will write all this stuff down and then it's a big freaking secret. But then how do you connect and relate to people if you keep all this stuff a secret? Furthermore, when you're out there building relationships out in your workforce, right, with the, the marketplace or with customers or clients, however you refer to them, somebody in your marketplace, if you hold all this back, then how can you really connect to somebody? And how do they get to know the real version of you? And this is all the tough stuff, inner work. And this is why I'm a big, massive believer in heart, mind, body. It's all the inner stuff. And why I wrote the book the way I did is I, and I've been in sales a long freaking time. And there is not anybody that I know that works on themselves. And I'm in some massive corporations doing stuff with selling from the heart. There's not one freaking executive sales leader, chief sales officer that's helping salespeople become the best versions of themselves. You're talking about having a happy, healthy workforce. I put something out there not too long ago as a quote. And I said, hey, sales leaders, if you want to have a healthy sales funnel, make sure your salespeople are healthy. If you want to build really great relationships with your customers, you got to build a relationship with yourself first. And if the relationship you have with yourself is dysfunctional, my opinion, it carries out into the workforce. And this isn't a Dr. Phil moment because I'm not a doctor. <laughs> it's just, I just see what play out, right? I just play one online. How's that? <laughs> That's what I was just going to say. <laughs> 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 I think there's there's freedom in owning your what makes you you there's freedom in standing in it and just honoring it it's it's partly why I honor being the crazy red-haired lady people actually literally think why would you name yourself that and I'm like because it works for me because of what I do because then I don't have to be afraid if I just if I just go ahead and say it and I go ahead and say what I do, I have found more freedom in that. And then, I mean, there is, it is hard though. I will say that it is hard because I, then I have to wait for what everyone else is going to say. What are they going to do? What are they going to, you know, what's this facial expression, that kind of thing. But when I own it, then I feel more confident because I know who I am. I know my story. I know how hard I've worked to get here, you know? And so when I just come right out and say, I'm the crazy red haired lady, I know that I feel freedom in just being who I am. No, and, and thanks for sharing because I, I think when you can come to grips with, I don't give a you know what about what other people say, then you've arrived. And I had, I mean, still to this day, I battle with it. I'll tell you that right up front. I still battle with what people have to say about me and I'm constantly worried about it. But sometimes I just have to say WTF, right? Yeah, it's real, but it's, I think, working on that, releasing the outcome. I have to tell myself that all the time, release the outcome, so. It also works when you turn over 60. <laughs> <laughs> Something to look forward to. <laughs> hey, but, 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 I'm, I'm heading in that direction. I'm not too far behind, but that's the filter of, right? I don't give a you know what, right? That just comes with age, right? Right. So what else? Oh, so, so here, so here, here's something I think about, cause I want to play off of what Catherine said is I want us to think about, cause this is like being your authentic self, right? Crazy red hair lady is how would you define authenticity? 
Because that's a freaking buzzword right now for a lot of people, right? So here, here's what I'd like us to define. What's it mean to be authentic? What's it mean to be real? And what's it mean to be genuine? So we kind of took off from your um, podcast when I heard it, Larry. And our question is, what, what does the word authenticity mean to you? Because <laughs> you guys asked that question. I'm just telling you, some of the people who were on here might have been on our, our video cast. We don't have a podcast yet, but we have a video cast. But that's the question we ask. And, um, but then it, it kind of evolves into real and genuine. But what does that really mean? So, you know, I mean, how many, how many times have you gotten in these discussions with friends, girlfriends, right? Whatever. They say, I'm just being me. How many times have we said that? Right. Mm -hmm. But then when I always hear people say, I'm just being me, then I always push back and go, well, who are you? Are you really being you? Or are you pretending to be you? Because that's what you want everybody else to think. Or if you're asking, if you're saying, I'm just being me and then waiting for someone else to tell you who you are, that's not really authentic because you're looking for someone else to define you. See, but, you know, at least when it comes to authenticity, I believe everybody on this call is authentic. We're all authentic human beings. It's a choice that we make. Either lead that lifestyle or you don't, right? I don't know how to be any other way. <laughs> Honestly, I wear my heart on my sleeve. I don't know how to be any other way. Okay, so now, okay, so now let's take it one step farther. Then if, why do we find it so difficult to build those authentic relationships with our customers? Rejection. <laughs> Rejection is a big one. Okay, expand on that. What do you mean? Well, um, I make my own products and I also do some alternative therapy, but um, it's really hard when, I guess, for example, I go to some of these new age shows and I have my, my products there and, you know, their body language will say whether they're just passing through or they're, you know, or they're just, you know, they pick it up and they're like, oh, I love the name. That's so great. Or, oh, these are really cool. Or, you know, some of the really outlandish ones, like, can you eat it? No, you can't eat it. But, um, you know, I, would, I wouldn't uh, suggest that. But if I sit there all day and no one stops or I sit there all day and like, you know, they pick it up or they talk, but then no one buys anything. It, I, I put everything, I put a piece of myself into each bath, each spritzer, each tea, each tea that I make. And then it's kind of like, it feels like I'm being rejected because they're not buying, you know, there's a need for it. My thing is mental health. And so, you know, if you, but I'm not going to shove it down their throat, but it does feel like being rejected. It feels like they're rejecting the crazy red haired lady because she's too crazy. So here, here's what I want you to think about. You shouldn't take it personal. They're not rejecting you. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Curious. Oh, I, I can I can agree with uh, Catherine on that in some points. Like for her, it's it's creating stuff and putting it out for people to 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 uh, bring into their life. For me, uh, as a voiceover actor, trying to help local businesses or big five, Fortune 500 companies or whatever the case may be, the project may be. When you try to put in auditions for this said product project and then you don't hear anything or uh, they tell you, oh, we're just going with somebody else. It's sometimes it's hard to hear that. And, but someone always told me is that it's not that they don't like what you did because 90% of the time, what you did was great. It's just, they are looking for something a little bit different that's fitting in with that project. But it doesn't mean that they're not gonna keep you in mind for something else that can, that's coming soon to you. Or they may say, I don't have something for you here, but I know somebody else that will have something for you because you fit what they want. And so sometimes it's hard for us as creative people to not see that and not take it personally. But believe me, Catherine, after being in the military for almost 10 years, 
you, thick skin is something that you have to build up, especially when it comes to that creative stuff, or yeah. you will go mentally unstable, which well, right. I and I like totally that. get that. So. I appreciate your insight. I totally get that. I, but um, yes, I totally understand that. Yeah. But my main other business is that I'm an animal communicator. So oh, yeah. you also have to have a very thick, thick skin to be like, you know, so Fido, let's talk, you know. So, I mean, you know, to even peel this back more is we're going to be told no a lot more than we're going to be told yes. Mm-hmm. And being crazy during this time is not that bad anymore. Like 90% of the people now through this year have gone crazy. Right. Yes. Most people who are actually crazy, like me and you, we're just a little bit ahead of the game for them. So we already know what's <laughs> going to happen. So. Right. Yes. So. Well, and I use the crazy to my advantage. So like if they don't believe in what I do, you know, because not only that is I help loved ones who've lost other loved ones. So I'm a medium as well. So I can just look at them and say, well, just chalk it up to me being crazy and off we go. So, you know, I kind of, I try to work with it, but that rejection piece is big when you, when you're out there and, you know, you constantly do it and that kind of thing like that. But that's just my own thing. That's something that I have to work on. Um, so, and, and feeling what people don't say is another hard one. So, yeah. but. So he, he, I mean, here's what's saying. Um, on my podcast, I had a guy named Brett Adamson who came on the podcast. Um, Jennifer and Jackie, you may have listened to it. Yeah. Um, I've talked about it on, on the group that I have, but what was interesting. So Brent wrote the book, The Challenger Sale. This book came out 2009, 2010. He co-authored it with a guy named Matt Dixon. To me, it's probably the most misinterpreted sales book that's out there that I know of. And it took me a while. It literally took me, and Daryl knows this, it took me two years to get this guy to come on the Selling from the Heart podcast because he works for Gartner. Gartner is this big conglomerate company that does sales and marketing research worldwide for companies that are $100 million a year and above. And I've spoken on stage with him before at a technology event, and that's how I got to know him. But one day he sent me a message and we struck up, we struck up our relationship. And I said, Hey, I'd really like for you to come on the podcast so we could talk about selling from the heart and challenger sale and how it integrates. And he said, well, let me run it by Gartner. He goes, let me run it by Gartner. It might take me two weeks to get an answer, but I'll get back to you. And the next day he gets back to me and he says, I can come on your podcast. And I said, well, I thought it would take two weeks. And he said, well, it just so happens the two people I needed approval from listen to your podcast. (laughs) so it kind of escalated the process but what was interesting is this was the only podcast that I've ever done with Daryl that I actually had a notebook sitting right there as we're interviewing this guy and I'm taking three and a half pages of notes as I'm trying to podcast with this guy and record it at the same time but what was interesting I asked him this and this plays off of what Catherine this is why I want to bring this up is I asked him I go, where do you see, right? What do you see salespeople struggle with right now based on your research when they engage with executives, right? When they engage with mid-level decision makers. Now, you guys might not be doing this, but I want you to think about this story as it relates to what Catherine just said and what might be going on with you. And he says, Larry goes, we see salespeople struggling in three areas right now and COVID's exposed this. So this podcast came out right before the 4th of July. So, I mean, we were into COVID for a while. And he said, salespeople are struggling in in three areas. They're lacking confidence. They're lacking believability in themselves and their messaging. And they lack self-worth. Think about that. Now think about that as it trickles down into your daily life and how you're dealing with what you're dealing with, right? So I'll take it one step farther is if you lack self-confidence in you, if you lack confidence in your messaging and you have low self-worth and you're beating the shit out of yourself internally, what do you think starts to happen when you go out into the marketplace and communicate with people? They do you think they that. smell what you're cooking really freaking fast? 
it's just like the minute you open your mouth, it goes, all right, right. I get what this person's saying already. It's your body like goes back to, right? Hey, Mr. Griffin, how do you pronounce your first name? Uh, Maccabee. Maccabee, like yes. the Maccabees back in the old days. Correct, sir. So, you know, when, um, God dang it, I lost what I was going to say. I looked at you and I asked you how to pronounce your name, and holy shit, I forgot what I was going to say. <laughs> <laughs> right because i was focusing on how to pronounce this dude's name and now i forgot what to say lack of confidence yeah, huh? yeah that guy right dude i really lack confidence getting close to 60 <laughs> hey, Jan, Sanity. Sanity. Jan, keep your camera off so all i do is see you with your mask on <laughs> why <laughs> oh, wow <laughs> wow um, gosh, dang it. No, so anyway. We're talking about Brent Ad, Ad, oh, Admin, Adams. Adamson with the Challenger and talking about the, golly gracious. Body language oh. and stuff. Now, okay, now, thank you. Now I got it. Okay. Body, <laughs> I got body language. Thanks, Jan. So, <laughs> but this, see, this plays in, and this is why I said Maccabee, he needs to meet Tasia Valenza. Jackie. Yeah. Yeah. So, so Tasia came on the podcast. She's a voiceover actress. She's an Emmy winning voiceover actress here in LA. Mm -hmm. and so she came on our podcast. She came on to my group and she started talking about body language, voice inflection and all that mm -hmm. stuff and how you exude confidence behind the screen. Stuff you already know, right? Yeah. Well, it's most, more or less. Yeah. <laughs> but, but just think about it. If we have a rocky relationship with ourselves, we beat the heck out of ourselves. We have low self-confidence. We struggle to believe in our message and we're not working on our self-worth. That carries out into the marketplace. That carries out into our conversations and people start to sense it. They sense how we carry ourselves and so forth. But what would it be like? How do you work on your self-confidence? How do you work on your believability and your message? And how do you work on your self-worth? You got to work on it every single day. And you got to program your mind to do it, right? And, and hats off to a near and dear friend of mine, Jennifer, you know, I'm going to talk about KB, is Cody Bateman came into my life at just the right time as well. And he entered my life like two, three years ago. And I've had deep, deep, deep conversations with the founder of Send Out Cards all around this. And I literally remember as plain as day, it was because it was this year. Mm -hmm. It was right around March 9th, 8th or 9th of 2020. Um, I was supposed to speak at a technology event that got canceled, but I didn't cancel my reservations because I was going to another conference and I was speaking at another event. So I had three days of downtime. And I sat in my hotel room in Orlando for one whole day and I never left the room. And all I did was watch Cody Bateman videos <laughs> and stuff around I am statements and positive affirmation. And literally it's in a folder like this, but it's about that thick of all the notes I took. And I said, at that day, I pro I reprogrammed my brain. And I said, this is the day that I start working on myself better. I already wrote about it in my book, but it was said a different way. Mm -hmm. And I said, at, from that day forward, and, you know, Jackie and Jennifer knows what time in the morning I get up to work on myself. <laughs> and I literally, so does Nicole, but I spend that first 30 and 45 minutes just working on myself and the relationship I have with myself. In fact, I'm going to do it as soon as we get off this call because I block that time off. And so that's what I'd ask for you guys to think about is during these crazy, hectic weeks. And it kind of ties into the first couple chapters as far as uncovering you and getting really brutally honest with yourself is you got to be willing to set the time aside every single day and work on the relationship you have with yourself. And some of you may not be morning people, but I would urge you to try to find the time in the morning to do it. Because I think if you do it at night, my personal opinion, freaking 85% of the day is already gone. Mm -hmm. And now you're working on yourself and you're going right to sleep.
thoughts, questions, comments? There's a couple apps, um, Tasia's app, Haven, that would, it, it's a, a meditation type of app. Um, it's free. They're really, really awesome. You can do it in the morning and you can do it in the evening. But another app that I use, it's called I Am. It's another free app. And what it does is it sends you I Am statements throughout the entire day. So you're keeping that positive mindset going. Um, and it helps me immensely because, you know, the, I have a lot of different stresses in my life dealing with, you know, we all do dealing with different people, agents, customers, whatever. But if you keep yourself in the right frame of mind all day long, the stress seems so much minimal than yeah. what it has to be. Yeah, I'm finding another one. It's on my phone. Um, Jackie, we actually shared that one yesterday. No, Monday, didn't we? Um, and then the other one was Nancy has one that's called Think Up that you actually oh, okay. record your own voice. Nancy's on the call right now. And Amy, I shared, I sent that out. It was a meditation, right? Was the, what's that called? Time something timer? Inside yeah. Timer. Okay. Here, here's another, here's another, here, I use this one a lot. Here's another one. It's called Plum Village. Okay. And that, and that's a free app as well. Um, like the fruit? Yes. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, P L U M, Plum Village. And I'm just going to ask one more time, Amy. What was the name of yours? Because I thought I put it in the email. What was it? The meditation insight, insight timer. Insight timer. Okay, just in case people are writing down. So the hey, so, so here, so here's a here's a question for the group. When it comes to working on yourself, what do you find the most difficult? Time and the ability to get away from everyone and everything to do so. So can I, can I give you my two cents, Maccabee, on time? <laughs> and you may not like it, but we're all adults on this call. <laughs> Uh-oh. <laughs> Go for it. I think when, when I hear the word, I don't have enough time, you know mm -hmm. that signals? Yep. It's not important to me. Yeah. Because if it was important to you, you would find the time. And then Maccabee jumps off the call. <laughs> I'm just kidding. I know. I, I, I don't want to be here anyways. I don't. I don't oh, no, but no, but no, but 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 serious because I'm living through it right now in time, and I guard my time like there's no tomorrow. Mm -hmm. But you know, my podcast partner Daryl urged me. He goes, Larry, you're burning the candle at both ends. You got to find some time for yourself. And I go, no, 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 I just, I just can't do it. I can't do it. He goes, just try it, right? He literally blocks off. I mean, I don't know how he does it because hats off. He literally blocks off Wednesday. He doesn't do a thing, right? And we share our calendars and he's blocked literally every Wednesday off from here to eternity. And he goes, you got to try it. And so I blocked from noon to five every Wednesday from here to eternity. And I've cheated probably 25% of the time, full disclosure. <laughs> but he goes, you got to find time for yourself and to build that relationship with yourself during the week. And so now I've just, I've uncovered how to find more time. Can I share something on time? Yeah. I work with a mentor from Southwestern Consulting and that was my biggest challenge is because I am being pulled at so many different directions and because of my personality, I would put everybody else and everything else ahead of my own needs. So one of the things he taught me is, you know, you schedule everything out in your day and I'm talking about the times you get dressed, if you meditate, put everything on your calendar, you know, if you, and then just like Larry, I mean, just like Daryl does, I do the same thing Wednesday. I couldn't do the whole day like you, Larry, but a half a day on Wednesday is I take that solely for me to refresh because if I'm not at my peak, I'm not helping anybody else be it theirs. Yeah. Um, what, what calendars do you guys use just out of curiosity? Gmail, Google, I mean, or Outlook, what's your calendar of choice? 
Well, I used to use um, Gmail, the Gmail calendar, but now I use Outlook. Do you guys use some and form of electronic color-coded. calendar? Most people, yeah. right? Syncs to your phone, right? It's either it's either like Outlook or Gmail or something like that. I also write. I haven't seen one of those. I haven't seen one of those in a long it, time. It helps to write every day. Like I write out my week but, before. But, 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 but one of the but one of the things that that um, and I started doing this a while back. My my whole calendar is color coded, mm-hmm. and it's color coded based on certain things, right? Yeah, and I and I would think about doing that, Maccabee. I think right now for yeah. me, it's um, one. I'm I'm coming from the aspect of a night a regular nine to five job now doing voiceover as a full time job, but I'm also dealing with being a stay at home dad. So yeah. I have a four year old that's only gone you know two three two and a half hours out of the out of the day. And then the rest of the time, I have to, you know, somewhat entertain him and still be around him, but also still do my job as well. So there are some times where it's difficult for me to actually get to that point of, hey, I got to do a recording now, but I'm going to still try to do it. But then I have to, you know, pause it or something when he comes into my home studio and then, you know, go deal with him, get him on something real quick so I can finish it. And then when I get done with all my stuff, then my wife comes home from work. I have to, you know, I'm, I'm doing the cooking. I'm trying to make sure the house is clean still. So I still have my job as a full-time voiceover actor when projects come in, but I also have the full-time job being a stay-at-home dad and a husband. So trying to get that sense of, okay, I have maybe an hour after everybody goes to sleep that I can have time to myself. But then I got to get up early in the morning again to get make sure both my boys are off to school, make sure that my wife is good to go as well. And then still either, hey, I get you know an hour or so extra sleep or I'm trying to start working on my networking again or trying to do auditions again. And so I'm trying to fit in combining the whole stay-at-home dad stuff plus voiceover okay so, I, 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 I get it so so here, here's something to think about how would you define non-negotiable anybody how would you define non-negotiable no matter what it, it's you it, it, either it happens at that point or it doesn't so, so what I'd ask for you guys to think about is look on your calendar and start putting just blocks of time. What, and it could be 20 minutes, right? 15 minutes, 30 minutes. Those are non-negotiable times I work on myself. And try it and block it off on your calendar. Or set a reminder on your phone, right? You could do that. Is, you know, maybe midpoint of every single day for 15 minutes, you get a freaking reminder on your phone. You just stop what you're doing, obviously, unless you're in a meeting or something like that. And you just start working on yourself. And then color code your calendar. Because then I started doing this and then I can look at my calendar for the whole week and I have it color coded out, I can glance at it real quick and I know exactly what's going on. And it works, it it really does work, but it takes some time, but it's the non-negotiables. I have non-negotiable times on my calendar that nothing happens, those are non-negotiable. I don't care what happens. And it took me a while to tell people no, literally no. Like opportunities to talk to first time to executives and things like that, no, sorry. And now people know that I guard my time 
from 12 o'clock to five o'clock every Wednesday. They know it. Except me. Yeah. <laughs> well, that happened before. Except me. Sorry. <laughs> what other questions does anyone have? How do you, takeaways. I, have, I have a question. Can you hear me? Yep. Yeah. Um, a lot of times it's, it's not just what's on schedule. It's how I feel like uh, my mindset for that at that period of time. And I'll say, well, I was going to do this and then I'll, because I, I don't really have accountability other than to myself. So I end up blowing it off. And like when you're trying to schedule that specific time, being, um, I, it's easy when you work for somebody else and you got somebody else telling you, you can do this at this time, but when you're doing it for yourself, sometimes that state of mind's not there. Oh, so I love this. <laughs> no, so I love what you're saying, James. This was, this was told to me like 25 years ago from one of my very first mentors. He said, Larry, he goes, you got to uncover, right? Like, this isn't like shrink stuff, but this is what was told to me. He goes, you got to uncover when your brain works the best and capitalize on when your brain works the best and do all the tough stuff, tough conversations, all the mental heavy lifting you do when your brain's fresh. Gosh, that was told to me in the 90s. And so if I shared with you my calendar, you would see that I've blocked off time and my heavy lifting where I'm doing coaching calls and running things is between like seven o'clock in the morning and two o'clock in the afternoon. After that, the after two o'clock, right? In about a couple more minutes, my brain starts shutting down. And even, and even when Daryl and I, you know, we don't do podcasts past two o'clock. We don't like if we schedule our meetings, our one on ones with each other for accountability purposes, man, the minute we start fading off, we know our brains and we just say, done, we're done. We'll revisit it first thing in the morning when our brain's fresh. But we, I've just learned to capitalize on time and I go, OK, all my tough stuff's going to get done when my brain's the freshest. All my tough conversations, all my all every anything that requires maximum brain power, I do when my brain's fresh. I'll still have meetings past two o'clock, but they're just like get acquainted conversations or relationship building conversations. Nothing that's going to require me to move a sale along or anything like that. Ready to go. Yep. Well, Larry, we don't want to keep you any longer than we promised to, but or that you you agreed to. We just appreciate very much that you're here. Um, I didn't mean to cut anybody off. Did you, anybody have any last comment or anything? I guess I, guess I had a question. Yeah, go ahead. My question was, I guess, when you're talking about, you know, working on yourself and whatnot, um, would, wouldn't you say though, that working on yourself would be giving time to your business? I mean, especially if you're an entrepreneur. <laughs> yes. So I was forced into entrepreneurship, right? <laughs> so right if i don't make a living we don't eat type thing right. so I, I mean but i had to learn the hard way that i can't provide for you know this is my wife and i now but i can't provide for her if i'm not fresh and and i've literally and jennifer and jackie know this i'll pour in 14 15 hour days seven days a week sometimes just like i'm sure you have Catherine. <laughs> <laughs> but then what good does it do, right? I just run myself into the ground. And I've just learned this year, this is what really COVID's taught me, it is really how to prioritize things. Yeah. I mean, I do. I chase money in the mailbox just like everybody else does. But I'm no good to people if I'm not good to myself, if I can't recharge myself. Yeah. Yes, and no. There's but it, but it's, e it, I know, and it's easier said than done, right? Yes. Uh, yeah, for sure. Because you'll probably get off this call and beat the crap out of yourself because you're on this call for an hour. <laughs> <laughs> well, I think it's hard when you're a parent, when you're a mother though, when you're a parent, you know, I mean, when you live in a household where there's two of you, now there was a point in my life where there was just me. So I was an only parent. So that's a, you know, different thing entirely. 
but there are different expectations for what men do and what women do. So, you know, men, if they work outside the home, you know, their expectation is to go, go home and, or go to work and come home and then they do whatever the heck they want to. And then, but the woman's expectation is, is that you go to work all day and now you're home. That's fantastic. Now you have to do all the kids stuff and all the house stuff as well. So for me, if I get any time that's for myself, I try to do it in the evening when the house is the quietest, because then I have nothing that bothers me. So, I mean, it's just that I think that in some ways, if I don't burn the candle at both ends, then there's not going to, there, there is no other time. There is no other time because life is super short. Yeah. So, I mean, there just is no other time. If I don't work on me, if I don't work on my business, if I don't put in forth the effort to work on the crazy red haired lady, then who is? If I don't invest in myself, then who's going to invest in me? No one. I have to do it. So, I, I, amen, yeah. amen on that one, crazy red haired lady, because I'm right with you. <laughs> but I also have to realize that if I continue to do it, I, and I'm a workaholic, freaking Jackie knows this, I'm a freaking workaholic, literally a workaholic. But it wasn't until recent that I found I'm only as good as if I recharge myself and I find the time to do it. Cause otherwise, if I just, if I just grind 14, 15 hours a day, seven days a week, I know what's going to happen. I've tried to get away. I've tried to get away. Right. Two months ago, I'm up in Santa Barbara cause I live 45 minutes South of Santa Barbara. And we went up for a day to go to wine country. And guess what I freaking did the whole time I'm with my wife? Answered the phone. <laughs> I answered the phone. I responded to emails. I was doing work as I'm sipping on wine, right? <clears throat> and then the whole way home, I got nod on in my ear, which wasn't a very pleasant ride home. Yes, Guilty. I do that to mine as well. <laughs> I do the same thing sometimes too. Yeah. But... You, you know, that's why I just, I have to make a commitment to myself and I talk about non-negotiables. I just, you know, I'm not saying you have to completely do 360s, but I'd urge people on this call, find the non-negotiables, find the non-negotiables, you know, Catherine, even if it's just 30 minutes every other day and you just stop what you're doing and you just veg out, even if you freaking sit in a corner and do nothing. Mm -hmm. right? I go to acupuncture. <laughs> so acupuncture is my friend. <laughs> but I will tell you, but if, if, if you have, if, if the relationship you have with yourself is dysfunctional, I know what happens when you go out in the field. I know what happens. So Larry, we're gonna, we're not going to keep you, but I do want to, cause I, I really, it's so funny. <laughs> if people now saying they couldn't get in, I'm sorry, people. I think there were some issues with the, um, with the link, some people got in, no problem. Um, Larry has been kind enough to, we have about, uh, I think we have more than enough um, books for everybody that's on this call to get a signed copy from him. So I'm gonna be asking you all to, actually you could do it right now. We can let Larry go, but I want you to know that the, um, Larry has agreed that probably he's going to return like quarterly to do little these little conversations with us through our Success Connect community. So it's not going to be in the TTR networking group. It's going to be for the people that want to work. You guys showed up today. We did have about probably 10 more people that had signed up and now I'm finding out there's people who couldn't get on. So that kind of sucks. But we'll make sure that we get more books if we need them for anybody that, but you guys are here. I think we've got enough. Um, and I know I've got a book that's all bent up in a mess. Um, I am going to do a follow-up email with the link to the Success Connect that, like I said, was gonna we're going to launch that on the 30th of November. And Larry and I have not discussed when he's coming back, but it'll be sometime probably in the first quarter of next year. Um, and it'll be just like this. We'll do it. I think the intimacy of being able to talk is pretty cool. Um, and I just would encourage you um, to look at your email and anybody else. You, if you sign up, 
um, for the Success Connect. It'll be open. Actually, I think it's open now, but I got to get you the link. Um, you get 50% off, which look at that. It's, I think it's $145 for three months. It, it, I mean, at the value, I will tell you, Larry's going to come back. We've also got on December the 2nd, which is not the first day, but on Wednesday, December the 2nd, we are having Michelle Correo, who just um, released, she's a local lady who just released her book called Triumph Over Fear. Um, with grace and gratitude, the Michelle Correo story. It's an ebook, but I also found out it's a um, it's in paperback too. But it's it's literally if you go find Michelle Correo, I would just and I'll send that in the email. Don't want to take away from Larry's. If he started a new book, you guys need to get this book. <laughs> you need to go find him on LinkedIn. Is that the best way to do it, or what would what would you suggest? The book or well, or the no, book? I mean, where tell us where they would get the book. If they don't need the book if they're on this call, because I'm yeah. gonna send them the book. Um, and so, he, so so a couple things is um, yes. If you know if any of this resonates, you can go to sellingfromtheheart.net forward slash daily, and I and I send out something yes. every day just a little inspiration with an action item with links to podcasts and things like that. There's no selling done, none whatsoever done on it. That goes out every day. Um, you can find me, all, I'm all over LinkedIn, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter. I would, you know, if, if this message resonates and all that, I have a real, and Jackie and Jennifer know this, I have a really deep network that, um, if you ever need help with anything or anything like that, you got a question, I can't answer it. I will find somebody in my network who will. And Jackie and Jennifer have been privileged to meet some really freaking cool people that y'all <laughs> normally wouldn't get access to. Nicole has as well. Yeah. It has been awesome. I will say that. Yeah. And I think it just, it just opens up, right? When you start hearing the same message from other people and so forth, it starts a validating your own thinking but it opens up your network. It opens up, you know, like-minded people hang out with other like-minded people. Cool, thank you. Thank you, thank you. Um, and I do have his email. I will send that, is that all right? Yeah. <laughs> the way I said that, I'm thinking, well, I'm gonna send it out. I don't know, maybe it's not. Yeah, um, we're just so happy that you could do this, Larry. We, we scheduled this quite a while ago and he and I were talking about trying to get him in town for a, something in trade show or we we're gonna do something that was before COVID. Then COVID hit and everything kind of went crazy as we all know, the crazy red haired lady, um, I, <laughs> she knows. Um, but I just want you to know that Success Connect is all about this stuff. This is what we're digging into for three months. And we'd love to have you be part of it. And we're gonna get uh, Larry back and we're gonna get some other people that uh, I think you're gonna be blown away by what some of the connections are and some of the things that you're gonna pick up. And today was perfect, Larry. Thank you very much. No, you're welcome. And if anyone has any questions or they wanna take something offline, just reach out to Jennifer. She'll send you my contact information or hit up Maccabee because I just sent him my email address <laughs> and he has it now. So we can take something offline and then just let me know. Yeah. And uh, I was going to say, I'm keeping, I'm saving the chat. I think I've got everybody's address. If I don't, I will reach out to you with a, a request for that. I'll either hand deliver these or I'll get them to you, but these are really nice. These are really nice. So we're glad that you've uh, you joined us. Thank you, Larry. Oh, you're uh, welcome. Thank you, Larry. You guys have a good evening. You too. Thank thank you. Jack, I'll see you Friday. Jennifer, I'll see you Friday. Yeah, we'll see you. Yep. If any, anybody who's on here has any questions, thank you so much for joining us. Um, I would just say, look for that email. And this is the launch of our Success Connect. So you're part of that, you know, that, that group and I don't know I know Larry has agreed he's going to come back we have some other people like Michelle that's coming on December the 2nd Mondays will always be our meetings um live and then we're going to have some pop-up things that are going to come up like December the 2nd and then uh Catherine don't tell them your whole story but she's going to do something in December um and Michelle or Dawn's going to do some stuff and and um 
Nicole has been taking the blogging academy and she's finally going to start sharing with us in the success connect and then we have some um, unbelievable other speakers and I would just put it out to you that if you're interested in doing this this is the best time to get connected right now we have a, uh, a private face group Facebook group and all these things I, I I get excited because it's like this is what we've been working toward our TTR groups are not going to close by any means. We're going to keep those going, but there's so much potential with what we're doing here. So anybody got any last comments or anything? Oh, TTR oh. cares. Yep. Next, next Thursday, TTR cares. Okay. Thursday, 4 PM. Uh, the registration is on Eventbrite and the focus or theme of the conversation is attitude of gratitude so we're looking forward to seeing everybody there yep and then we'll have all of us uh, all of us who can be on the first on the 30th not the first it's actually the 30th of november so i i just thank you all very much and like i said if i don't have your address i will get it i see amy's put hers in there but i think Maccabee, I think you might be one of the only ones. Jan, I'm not sure if I've got your- Oh, I'll put mine in there, it's fine. Please put it in there and uh, just- Whereabouts? Um, what did you say? Somebody- Whereabouts are you located? Are you talking can, to me? If, if I were near your neighborhood, I could come by and pick it up too. If, oh, Jan, yes, yeah. you're talking to me. Yeah. I am in Noblesville. <laughs> okay. And Maccabee is too. And you know what? Yep. If I can hand deliver them, I am going to do that. I will tell you, I bought these books probably a month ago or more from um, off of Amazon. I didn't even order them like from, from uh, Larry. He just asked me, <laughs> he just said, go buy them and send them to me. I'll sign them. So, um, and, and I know we have enough for everybody that's on here today. Um, so that's cool. Maccabee, I got that. Okay. Um, and I guess I would just say, if you have any questions, I'll send out his email when I send the, you know, the, the uh, email with the link for the Success Connect and uh, just all kinds of things happening. So thank you. If I forgot anybody, please let me know. Thank you. So good to well see everybody. Um, have everybody. a great evening. And it was so nice. Even the people that I know are on here and we didn't see your face. And I'm going to be I'm going to be selfish real quick while you all are here. If y'all ever need any voiceover uh, done for any audio video stuff, uh, telephonies, anything that has to do with the voiceover stuff, anything, I'm your guy. Okay. All right. Graphic design and illustrations of animals. <laughs> Animation, stuff like that. Yeah. And Catherine well, talks to animals. <laughs> I have to connect people. That's what it's all about. So exactly. So join us. I am not connect. I, I am going to hustle as much as I can out of this. Okay. <laughs> well, and I am just so I it's been an honor to have you all on here and I don't want to keep you anymore. Have a great evening. And if you have any specific questions, let me know, but I am going to send out the link to get signed up. And we've, we've, we, I think it's working, but I honestly am not going to send it. I'm not going to give it to you right this minute. I'll give it to you in the follow-up. And if you don't get it, let me know. We hope you can be part of this. We, we really look forward to getting this going. So thank you all. And I am going to say good night and say thank you so much. Good night. Nice. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. Bye. <laughs>